most recent data on pasture rental rates from 2014 shows Nebraska producers face some of the highest prices in the country. Of the 10 most expensive county average cash rent prices, four were in this state. Wayne placed fourth, Cumming was fifth, Pierce was eighth, and Washington ninth. Those costs might be expensive, but Nebraska Extension educator Aaron Berger says dry lotting cows could be another option. We recently talked with Aaron about how producers might be able to benefit from dry lotting by using some of the other feed resources in the state. So I think in Nebraska we're really in an interesting scenario right now. And if you also look at what the scenario is with current commodity prices in terms of corn, ethanol co-products, harvested forages, uh, really we can dry lot a cow right now competitively in many cases with what summer grass would be. Now there are some management things we need to take into account as we think about dry lotting. Obviously we need plenty of bunk space. Uh, we need to make sure we have water in a situation if we have pairs where those calves can easily get to the water. Having an area where those calves can get away from the cow, that they're kind of protected, especially during the breeding season. Providing some shade for those calves is really important as well. But really those things are things we can manage through. Uh, the dry lot scenario also provides us some opportunities from management in terms of uh, using some things like rumensin, which can improve feed efficiency. We may take advantage of artificial insemination if we have cows in a confined type scenario where we can utilize that tool. So it provides us some advantages from a regular pasture scenario as well. Can you give me a brief how-to for producers that haven't used this uh, method before, kind of what they need to know to get into it? Yeah, so I think you really want to look at your cost. What would it cost you to feed that cow in a dry lot scenario? Include your yardage, include your labor, equipment, things are going to be involved with that. Uh, make sure you have adequate bunk space. If we're thinking about pairs, we're looking about three and a half feet per pair to make sure we have plenty of bunk space. Uh, thinking about uh, if you haven't dry lotted cows before, that you have a site that's compatible and meets uh, Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality recommendations. Uh, those are some things to do. Beef website has excellent resources on how to dry lot cows. Uh, we've got a lot of research now that uh, can give us some insight on how to do that. So go in well prepared, think it through, but can be a viable management option. Describe a little bit about what the diet is and how you can expect performance to be the same or differ from your normal situation. Yeah, so in a dry lot scenario, we're actually able to control, of course, what's being fed. And we want to think about what the performance uh, goals are. And we can really have that be very comparable in a dry lot scenario to what it would be in a pasture type setting. Uh, so we want to develop the ration based on what's economical, based on our feed resources available, which is really going to vary with people depending on where they're at in the state and what they have available to them. What kind of the herd or what part of the herd are you looking at putting into the dry lot situation? Yeah, so I think the easiest group would be replacement heifers. They don't have calves with them. Uh, those would be the first group that's easiest to do that with. Uh, we can then look at doing that with pairs and that can work pretty well. We can also use early weaning where maybe we separate the cows from the calves and we target diets differently based on, again, performance goals for each of those groups. So we can really vary it and uh, have the tools available to make that work. Is this a situation that a lot of producers use during the drought of 2012 or after the drought of 2012 when grasses weren't up to par? Yeah, we saw it used a lot during the drought, but I think we're really seeing increased interest in it right now in Nebraska just because of the shortage of pasture and the value of pasture. And also if you look at us as a state, we're heavy on crop residue. I mean, we have a lot of corn, corn stalks. And so there's an opportunity for us to dry lot cows in the summer use crop residue in the fall and winter, and really have that be a very competitive system option with a traditional going to grass type scenario. You mentioned some of the management issues to look at, but for days when it's a little bit warmer out there, for cows that aren't used to being on dirt, what are the things that producers need to be aware of? Yeah, so obviously we gotta be thinking about heat stress as a possible issue. And so thinking about, especially the calves first, they're gonna be the most vulnerable. So adequate water supply, some shade for those. And then for the cows, we might wanna think about a shade type scenario for them as well. Uh, could have a place where maybe we're looking at some watering to cool the pens. So being aware of that, that's not as much of an issue with a cow-calf pair as it is to fat cattle just because they're not carrying the condition, but it's still something we need to be aware of and look to mitigate. Fly control an issue? Fly control, I think we just wanna keep those pens clean. Uh, be aware of the issues that are involved with that. Uh, we can use a fogger or an insecticide to be applied if needed, but that's really a case-by-case -case scenario. On the Market Journal website, we'll link to more resources from UNL about dry lotting cows.